Hello, everybody. We are so happy to be doing this program with you all. This is Lindsay Wildlife. We're doing our little Lindsay in the Community program here. Virtually, that is. And we have two very exciting animals to show you today. So some of you might be familiar with Lindsay Wildlife Experience, but if you're not, well, we're located pretty close by right over here in Walnut Creek, California. And what we kind of do is we specialize in native wildlife, which pretty much means we're a little bit different from a zoo. We only really take care of animals that are from the area. So we don't have any giraffes or elephants or jaguars or anything like that. We specialize in native local animals. So we, we have owls, we have eagles, snakes, scorpions, all kinds of really uh, cool California animals. And today we're going to actually meet two of those animals. We're going to meet two owls today, which I'm very, very excited about. Now, we are going to be taking questions throughout the program. If you do have any questions, feel free to type them down in the chat box down below, and then we will maybe read some of those questions off throughout the program. All right. So once again, if you have any questions, go ahead and type those down in the chat box. All right. So our first animal, we're going to come right over here and take a look at her. Let's see who we have here. She might take a moment to come out. Sometimes she needs to uh, adjust and be like, what's going on here? So we have actually a little piece of meat on this little scale right here. So if she feels inclined to do so, she might hop out and begin her training. By the way, you just saw a hand. This is the hand of a, one of our animal keepers right over here. This is Sam. Let me get a nice shot of Sam over here. That's Sam. And then we have Nithya behind the camera. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen with our wildlife friends here. So she might take a moment. But anyways, this is Cypress. And she is a Western Screech Owl. A Western Screech Owl. And you can't really rush wild animals. They kind of do what they do, you know. They are called wild animals after all. They are wild. So she is only going to come out if she wants to. But usually she's a pretty good uh, animal for training and whatnot. Um, so we're going to attempt to do some training with her today. <laughs> all right, Cypress. She's giving us a hard time. That's okay. We'll give her a moment. While we wait, I'll go ahead and start talking about something pretty cool about owls. So when you think about owls, what's the first thing that comes to your head? A lot of us think about this really cool ability they have to turn their head pretty far around. Now, common misconception is that they can turn their head all the way around. That's not the case. If they did turn their head all the way around, their head would probably pop right off of their body. But what is true that they can turn their head most of the way around about 270 degrees or so, about 75% of the way around. And the way they're able to do that is because of this stuff, vertebrae in their neck. They have twice as many bones in their neck than we do. We have about seven bones in our neck. So this is about as far as I can turn my head. Everybody at home, you could. Try seeing how far you can turn your head to. That's about as far as I can go. I, I don't know, is that about 90 degrees or so? Maybe not even that. I gotta be careful, I'm getting a little bit older. I don't wanna tweak anything. Um, but an owl can turn their head no problem at all because of uh, the invertebrate, they can go just like that. Pretty far around their body there. All right, well, it looks like Cypress decided to come out. So why don't we come on over and check her out. All right, and there she is. That is Cypress. She is a Western Screech Owl again. And you might be thinking to yourself, that's an owl? That looks like a little songbird. And yes, she is quite small. She's not a baby. She's actually a full-grown owl. Um, like I said, she's a Western Screech Owl, and this is about as big as they get. In fact, she is a female, which means she's even bigger than the males. The males, or the boys, I should say, um, get even smaller than Cypress here. So if I stand maybe a little bit closer to her, you'll actually see how small she really is. Hi, Cypress, how's it going? 
We have a window right here. Cypress loved looking out the window and seeing all of what is going on outside. Someone just walked by with the dog and you know, that's a wild wolf out there. That's a dangerous predator. Cypress has to stay on alert. So let's see if Cypress is interested in participating in some training. So if we look down here, our animal keeper, Sam, actually has this little lure on a rope here, a nice bright red color. And Cypress's job is to act like she's hunting, like she would in the wild. So this lure here is supposed to be like prey. So we'll see if Cypress is interested in trying to attack and hunt uh, this, this lure here. You interested, Cypress? Maybe she just wants to stare off into space today, and that's okay too. Maybe she's thinking about it. What do you think, Cypress? Like I said, she's a wild animal, so she doesn't always want to participate, and that is totally okay. But we are trying to mimic some natural behavior here. She is a hunter after all, so she's going to be out there in the wild hunting a number of things. You know, their number one favorite dish is probably mac and cheese. Uh, they might eat some Fruit Loops on occasion. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, my friends, I think I'm thinking of what I like to eat. My mistake. Uh, Western screech owl like this one likes to hunt rodents mostly. They like to eat little tiny mice. They might eat a nice vole, maybe even a larger thing on occasion, maybe even another bird, maybe a reptile if it's out at nighttime, and sometimes even insects. So it looks like Cypress decided to take her first flight and we'll see if she wants to continue doing her training here. She is going for it for sure. We'll see if she can grab onto that lure. Very good, Cypress. Okay, now because Cypress grabbed onto that lure, she gets a nice tasty reward for doing that. And it looks like she definitely wanted to take that nice piece there. Well, Sam, what is Cypress eating today? Mice. All right, she is getting some nice delicious mice today. That is one of the main things we feed her at Lindsay Wildlife Experience, but you know, we do feed her a number of other things. We'll give her some pieces of rat sometimes. Uh, sometimes we'll give her some insects, some beetles, all kinds of good stuff. I'm sure everybody at home has tried a mouse before like Cypress, is that right? Eh, probably not. I've never tried a mouse myself. I probably never will, but Cypress, that's her favorite food. And as you can see, she's very eager to get that piece of mouse there. Wow, good job, Cypress. So even though she is small, she is definitely mighty. I don't know how well you can see, but she has these razor sharp talons on her feet there. And the reason why she's able to grab onto that lure so tightly is because of those really sharp talons. She's quick too, let's, let's watch how quick she is. All right, and she got another one. She's doing a great job. What do you think, my, my friends? I think so. All right, does anybody have any questions yet about Cypress? Do we have any questions down in the chat box? Not yet. All right, no questions yet. All right, that's okay. I could talk about owls all day long. So are we all done? With that? Actually, a, a quick question about uh, what what gives what gives her the name Screech is in Screech Owl. That's a fantastic question. Why are they called Screech Owls? Well, you know what? I don't know because these owls actually do not screech at all. They do this little trill noise. And if we listen very carefully, Cypress is actually making some noises. Let's see if we can hear them. Do you all hear that? They're very, very tiny chirps. 
not chirps, it's kind of her trill, but she makes those noises. And then she does make another call. Well, maybe not her specifically, but her wild counterpart makes this other noise. And after Cypress goes away, I'm going to play that noise for you so you can all hear what a Western screech owl sounds like in the wilds. Because uh, you often hear them before you see them. There is an Eastern screech owl, which I do think screech a little bit more than the Western screech owl. Um, and because they are a relative of the Eastern screech owl, I believe that is how they got that name, even though they don't screech. All right. So now Cypress is actually going to begin a second training. So you'll notice she actually just flew over to this little rock looking thing here. What we're doing is some sound training. So on this little rock or inside of this rock is a speaker. And Sam is actually playing the noise of a mouse inside of the speaker. Um, and Cypress's job is to listen to that mouse noise and fly to it as if she were hunting a mouse in the wild. So I'm going to go ahead and place it to a new spot. How about we come over here, Nithya? And we put this speaker right here. Let's get a good shot of Cypress getting on onto the speaker there. There you go. So her job is to touch it and go on top of the speaker. She can't just fly to it. She has to go on top of it, just like if she were pouncing on a mouse. So she's doing pretty good so far. Are we uh, doing one more, Sam? All right. So we're gonna take the speaker. Where should I put it now? How about we go right here? Let's get a nice close shot of that speaker. And let's listen to that mouse noise. Cypress is up here. Let's go ahead and look at her up there. She's right up there. Maybe done with her training. She's going to let us know. Sometimes it takes her a minute. Want to try one more time, Cypress? Let's try again. She's thinking about it. You know how owls are. They do a lot of meditating. There we go. You need to go on top of the cypress. You're so close, Cypress. You just need to go on top of it and then you'll get a nice tasty treat. There you go, Cypress. All right. Is that it, Sam? Yeah. All right. There's a question. How did Cypress come to Lindsay Wildlife Experience? That's a great question. Cypress came to us actually in 2018. She was found in Northern California. I believe someone was out for a walk and they just found this little baby owl, this little baby owl on the side of the trail. And she was only a few days old. She was definitely not at an age where she should be by herself. And no one was able to find a nest or the parents of Cyprus. So Cyprus was brought into a wildlife hospital. And then she was raised with some other screech owls. Now, unfortunately, when it came time to return Cypress to the wild, we found that she was too attached to the caretakers that she had at that hospital. And uh, because of that, because she was getting fed and, and cared for, she would not be able to do so well in the wild. We definitely don't want an animal like this approaching people, asking for food or getting too comfortable near people because um, that could be dangerous to her and dangerous to people potentially. So. Um, they determined she was not able to go back to the wild. 
So she came to Lindsay Wildlife Experience and has been here for several years. So like I said, since she's been here for a little while now, she is not a baby, she's just small. And she is a beloved animal ambassador here at Lindsay Wildlife Experience. All right. <laughs> and Cypress is really good about going back into her kennel. As you can see, she flew right into that kennel there. And that's Cypress. That was Cypress's training. She's gonna go back into her enclosure now. I think she did a great job. Did, are there any other questions in the chat box about Cypress? Any other questions? Well, in the meantime, I could play what a Western Screech Owl call sounds like while we wait for our second owl. So if you're ever out for a walk, maybe you have your window open at nighttime, or maybe you're going for a nice stroll at nighttime, you might be walking and you might hear this noise. And that is a Western screech owl. As you can hear, that wasn't really screeching, it's more of a that was a terrible impression, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but you sometimes hear that at nighttime and I'm always able to hear that and be like, oh, there's a Western screech owl somewhere. I've only seen a Western screech owl once. I saw a family of Western screech owls one time. I almost never see them. I almost always hear them rather than seeing them. So keep your ears peeled or ears open, I suppose, and you might be able to hear a Western screech owl um, near you. Were there any questions in the chat box? No, I don't see any. All right. Well, if there are any other questions, feel free to put those in the chat box. But while we wait, I'll show you a couple more cool things about owls here. So I was talking about this head turning ability here, right? They're able to turn their head around. Now, some people might ask, why are they able to do that? But other animals can't do that. And it's because of those vertebrae, but they need these extra bones in the neck because they can't look around with their eyes. So if you wanna try this at home, you can try it with me. So if I look right into the camera, I have this really cool ability to look. If I keep my head still, I can look up and I can look down. I can look left and right without moving my head. Owls cannot do that. They cannot move their eyeballs at all. In fact, their eyes aren't really eyeballs at all. They're really large eye cylinders pretty much. Um, so their eyes are kind of locked into their skull. They're so big that if they were flying around, they would juggle around in their heads if they were just loose. So they're locked into their skull. And because of that, they can't move their eyes. But it's dangerous to not be able to move your eyes around. So they have evolved that ability to turn their head around. Pretty cool. Their eyes are so big compared to the size of their body that if we had the same size of eyeballs compared to the size of our head, our eyes would be about this big. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous, huh? But that's just how big their eyes are. And we can really see how big owl's eyes are with our next owl right over here. Why don't we come take a look? All right. So there's Sam, the animal keeper again, and this is Bubo. And Bubo is a great horned owl. And take a look at Bubo's eyes there. They are quite large. And this is one of the most famous owl species in the entire world. Just look at him. He is gorgeous. He has this iconic owl look. Look at those tufts on his head. That's where the name great horned owl comes from. But those aren't actually horns. They do look like horns, but there's no bones in there. There's no skin in there or anything like that. Those are just feathers. Now he has those up, which means he's on alert. He's looking out the window, it looks like right now. He's doing a program, which he hasn't done in a little while. So he's like, what's going on? So those horns are up. Um, his actual ears are on the sides of his head. So those horns aren't ears. His ears are kind of more down on the side of his head right there. And he makes noises too. That's a pretty interesting noise, Bubo. Do you wanna try doing that again? All right. That's not the typical noise you hear with a great horned owl. Uh, unfortunately, Bubo is a habituated 
uh, animal as well. He's an imprinted animal, which means he also is too used to being around people, which is not good. So Bubo is actually one of our older animal ambassadors. He's been with us for quite a while, since 1999. I wonder how many people in the audience has, have been around since 1999. There's probably a lot of us that are younger than Bubo. So Bubo, yeah, quite old. And he was found in Castro Valley. And he was actually found approaching people in a park. He was walking up to them. He was making some noises, chirping at them. Does that sound like normal owl behavior? Not really. That's not what a wild owl should do. So what we think probably happened was Bubo probably was a baby owl and he was probably taken out of the wild and fed for a while, kept at somebody's home. And then they probably realized, you know what? Owls make terrible pets because they're wild animals. So he was probably let go back to the wild. But then poor Bubo thought that food came from people. So he started coming up to people looking for food. Oh boy, a little camera difficulty there. That's all right. There we go. All right, that looks pretty good. So we don't want that to happen ever in nature. We don't want wild animals approaching people and relying on people. Oh, and Bubo had to lighten the load a little bit there. He just had to poop and that's okay. Everybody poops. Um, but as I was saying, we don't want that. So Bubo was brought to our hospital and he actually had to do a hunting test. So what he had to do pretty much was enter an aviary and we put a, and we put a live mouse into his aviary. And uh, the goal was to have him hunt it on his own. Unfortunately, Bubo was afraid of that mouse. He was afraid of the mouse. Does that sound right to you? It seems like it should be the mouse that's afraid of an owl. So that's why Bubo, unfortunately, has to live with us at Lindsay Wildlife Experience and why he's been with us for quite a while. Now, let's take a look at those eyes again. I, I've been talking about owls and how cool their eyes are. Big, big eyes. And I wanna point out something else cool about his eyes. And it happens when he gets a piece of food. So Sam, are we able to give Bubo a nice piece of food here? Let's, let's get close to those eyes here. And let's see if we notice anything interesting about those eyes. Some of you might have noticed he closed his eyes when he ate that food. Did you notice that, notice that? And when he closed his eyes, he actually closed something clear over his eyes. And that is an extra eyelid he has on his eyes called a nictitating membrane which is pretty cool. It's a clear third eyelid he has on his eyes. And we'll see if we can see that nictitating membrane again in just a moment. But pretty much what that nictitating membrane is good for is protecting his eyes. Now think about it, he's a hunter, he's out at night, he's searching for prey, and he's you know searching for mice, rats, things like that. And when he swoops down and grabs those things, those animals are going to fight for their life. They can bite, they can scratch, they're going to defend themselves if they can. And Bubo wants to make sure his eyes are protected. If his eyes get injured, if they get scratched or bitten, that could be it for our great horned owl because that those eyes are so important to their survival in the wild. So by closing that nictitating third membrane eye lid, they really protect their eyes. Um, from danger. And you know, when they're flying, it really helps them as well. Any debris that might fly in their eyes, um, that, that third eyelid protects it as, as well. Bubo is looking at something outside. I'm not sure what. There might be another dog walking outside, or maybe it's a small child with a balloon, it looks like. <laughs> All right. Any other questions about uh, our great horned owl friend here? Any questions? Yeah, we have some questions. Um, there's a question. Um, actually, let's see. One question is about what owls you might be likely to see in Berkeley. Oh, great question. So we are lucky here in California because we have a number of owl species. Uh, in Berkeley, you'll probably find uh, several different species. The great horned owl is one of the most, most common species you will find uh, in this area. 
And you can often identify a great horned owl by their call. Not this call that Bubo is making here, that peeping noise, but that classic hoo hoo hoo. That is always going to be the great horned owl. They're the only owl in this area that pretty much makes that noise. Um, we also have barn owls, which are probably the second most common owl in the area. Those are the kind of yellowish white owls. They're a little bit smaller than the great horned owls. Um, but in Berkeley, you guys over there are, are also lucky because you have a very special type of owl, which is the burrowing owl. And you can find those towards the coast. Uh, I can't remember exactly which park uh, has a good population of them. But around this time of year, those burrowing owls are gonna be migrating back into the area and nesting in the ground. So they'll actually go and find some ground squirrel burrows and, and pretty much live inside of there. And the reason why they're so special is because one, they're not always here. They migrate out of the area and back into the area. But two, they are a species of special concern. And actually in some areas, they are considered endangered. So that's definitely an owl we want to protect. So we got the great horned owl, barn owls. You have burrowing owls over there in Berkeley. But you know, you'll have a Western screech owl sometimes too. Definitely up in the Tilden area, you can see the Western screech owls. They like the forested areas for sure. Then on occasion, you'll get some other uh, types of owls too. We've had long-eared owls in the area before and short-eared owls and uh, sometimes other owls. But those are kind of the main ones you'll see in Berkeley. Good question. Um, someone else is asking about um, whether owls eat the whole mouse. Do they eat the bones? Do they eat the whole mouse? Do they eat the bones is the question? Yes. That's a great question. Um, so pretty much what happens is they will, you know, get their prey and they're going to scarf it down immediately. Uh, for Bubo, since he's a big owl, he can sometimes just swallow a mouse whole without, you know, even ripping it up. For some smaller owls, they're going to have to rip up their prey, um, but they will, in fact, consume the bones. But what happens is those bones and the rest of the body of the prey will go into the system there. And then what happens is something some of us are familiar with, and that is owl pellets. So the meat will be digested in the owl system, but the fur, the bones, and the feathers, if they ate a bird, cannot be digested. So they will then regurgitate those things they can't digest into a little pellet. And you can sometimes find those pellets laying underneath a tree or a telephone pole, and you'll be able to know that there was uh, an owl there. Or, you know, other birds of prey do it as well. But owls have uh, the most famous owl, uh, most famous pellets, for sure. There's even a song about them. Oh, is there a song? I'm not yeah. familiar with that song. Oh, yeah, the owl pellet song. Um, another question is, how many mice can Bubo eat in a day? Ooh, how many mice can Bubo eat in a day? That's a great question. I'm not sure the exact number. It's really going to depend on. It's really going to depend on the the area, how much food is available, and the size of the owl. Um, he is a male, so he is a little bit smaller. The females are a little bit bigger. They might be hunting more, but you know they're going to try to go for multiple rodents a night. Maybe three, maybe four, uh, maybe even more, maybe less, depending. On, on the situation. Okay, and then one last question. Someone is asking why the owls are awake. Why the owls are awake? That's a great question. So, Bubo, he is an owl. Owls, we learn, are nocturnal animals, which means they are awake at nighttime, right? Well, that is true for many, many owl species. There are some exceptions. Some are awake during the day. The reason why Bubo is awake right now is because his food is out at this time of day. So because the animal keepers come during the daytime, Bubo has adjusted his schedule to when his food comes out. And that is okay with him because as long as he gets his food, he's okay. So normally they come out at nighttime because you know that's when a lot of rodents are coming out. But since Bubo gets fed in the daytime, he's okay with being awake uh, in the daytime. Any other questions? 
There was one last direct question of, about Cyprus and how much Cyprus weighs, maybe Bubo too. Uh, good question. How much does Bubo in Cyprus weigh? Well, Cyprus weighs very, very light. She weighs, how much did she weigh today, Sam? 148. She weighed about 148 grams, um, which is about, I believe, a third of a pound. Which is about a third of a pound. All right, so I think we're going to say goodbye to Bubo while I answer these next questions. So, bye, Bubo. It was great saying hello to you. Oh, look, he's waving goodbye to us. <laughs> All right. So Cyprus, uh, as Sam said, about 140 grams or so, which is about a third of a pound. Very, very light. Bubo here weighs about two pounds, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, about two pounds. Pretty impressive, right? That's pretty light. Um, he's a pretty big animal, so you'd expect him to weigh more. But what a lot of people don't consider is that they are flying animals. And when you fly, you need, need to be as light as possible. So they actually have these really hollow, spongy bones, uh, which makes them pretty light animals. And he is a lot of fluff. Underneath all those feathers is a pretty skinny body. So you'll find that with a lot with, the, with a lot of flighted animals. In fact, the heaviest flighted bird, I think is only about 40 pounds. Pretty impressive. A lot of scientists think that's the reason why birds don't have teeth either, is because teeth are just extra weight in the body. So if you lose teeth, you have less weight and the better capability to fly. All right, any final questions? Yes, I think we have one last one. How many there. owls are living at Lindsay Wildlife right now? How many owls are living at Lindsay Wildlife? Let's see, we have Bubo, we have Cypress, we have a barn owl, and we have a barred owl. So what does that make that? Is that four? Am I missing any? I think that's all of them. I think we have four owl species at the moment. We've had uh, more in the past. Some have passed away uh, due to old age. Um, but we love our owls here at Lindsay Wildlife Experience. We're very well known for our owls. In fact, our logo is an owl. If you look at that, that's supposed to be uh, a barn owl head right there. So uh, we, we've had a burrowing owl in the past. Uh, we've had a great gray owl in the past. Very, very regal looking owl. Um, but right now, I think we just have four. Yeah. Right. Um, we have just two last questions. Is it possible to get those? Sure. Yes. Sure. OK, we have a question about the head feathers, I guess, on Bubo. Um, the, what, what are those head feathers for? It's a great question. So those head feathers actually have a pretty fun name. Those are called plumicorns. Who came up with that name? I'm not too sure, but that's a pretty fun name, plumicorns. The way my coworker likes to think about it is if you take your two plumicorns there, you can go plumicorns. And if you take one, you go unicorn. So plumicorns, unicorn. And uh, a lot of scientists debate on what the purpose of those plumicorns are. Some people think it's to kind of break up the shape of an owl silhouette. So if an, a predator is like looking in the, in the branches or something, they're kind of looking for a shape of a prey item. And that, you know, those, those horns kind of break up that shape. So maybe that's the purpose. Um, but they're also used for communication between owls. So as you saw earlier, if he's a little bit stressed, maybe he's agitated or curious, he'll put those straight up. And if he's relaxed, he might put them down. So those are a couple of reasons why they might have those, those horns on their head. Very interesting. And then one last question, how small are screech owls when they hatch? Oh, how small are screech owls when they hatch? That's a great question. Pretty small. I don't know the exact weight or a uh, height that they are, but they're they're very small owls. Um, not as small as like the elf owl like we have down in the Southwest, um, but they are one of the smaller owls we have around here. I'd have to look more into how small they actually are when they when they first hatched. Sam, do you know off the top of your head? All right, well, I, I don't know that one, unfortunately, but you should all look up a picture of a baby Western screech owl and see for yourself, because it probably looks pretty, pretty cute. <laughs> I'm sure, no doubt. Wow, well, this has been a really wonderful presentation. Thank you so much, Josh, for introducing us. And thank you, Sam, and the rest of the team there for introducing us to your owls. Um, do you have any last thing you'd like us to know about um, wild animals or wild animals in our neighborhoods? 
Sure, one last thing I'll say is that owls are just some of the most remarkable creatures on the planet. There is so much more I could talk about. I'm sure some of you can go home and look more up about them because there's just endless information about them. They're so cool, so fascinating. And we definitely wanna keep them protected. So we have them around a lot uh, for a long time to study. And like I said, some owl species need a lot of help, like the burrowing owl, which is endangered in some areas. So I like to say one good way to make sure owls are protected is just by having more trees around. So if you're able to plant trees in your yard or your local community garden or park, or maybe volunteer at an organization that plants trees, or simply just donate to an organization that plants trees, because simply by planting a tree, you're creating habitat, you're creating more oxygen, or absorbing more carbon dioxide. Planting a tree, there's nothing bad about it. There's so many good things, so many benefits to planting a tree. So something as simple as that can really help out owls and many other animals. Thank you so much. All right, everyone, let's give it up for Lindsay Wildlife. Hooray! Thank you so much, everybody. All right, take care, everyone. Bye-bye.